So how did you stumble upon projects that companies said to, to do? Oh, I would love to talk about this. So there's a company, they're called Clicks. And I'm not affiliate. I can't say I'm not affiliated with them because I work with them sometimes. But these people do not pay me. The program is free. Like, I literally was on LinkedIn one day. And someone posted about Clicks. And they have, um, they're partnered with IBM. And now they're also partnered with Salesforce. And they probably have multiple other partners. They actually just connected with Women in Cybersecurity, which Clicks. I'm also a member of. Y'all need to partner with me. Partner with, <laughs> partner with the podcast. Duh, if you, I'll send you uh, their email so you can get a link. Um, cool. But, I mean, it's, it's a free program, so I promise you I'm not getting nothing out of saying this. But I found out about them. They offer, like, project experiences where you can do shadow sessions. So, like, you can do, like, a day in the life of a cybersecurity analyst. You can – they have, like, where you can see practically what's happening in these roles. You're not just hearing about them and, mm -hmm. like, what, what you need to know to do them. You're seeing what's actually happening, you know, behind the curtain. So the shadow sessions are really cool. I did the project sprints. And they're offered in cohorts where it's like three weeks and they partner you with, it's like five of y'all at the start. <laughs> How many at the, the finish? By the end. Um, <laughs> I know in my first one, like we had people that kind of were tacked on at the very end because they their entire group left them and it was just only one person. So they came into our group. Um, but you do like the first one that I did was performing a vulnerability assessment as a security analyst. And it was both because they're partnered with IBM. We had real data and it was, uh, it was based. The first one was based on the Uber breach. And mm. yeah, so we were, we were basically given the scenario with like dummy data and basically told like, okay, how would you, how would you investigate this? Like go ahead and do your vulnerability assessment. And they walk you through the steps, but they don't, they don't spoon feed everything to you. They don't handhold you through the entire process. Like there's a lot of like you have to go out and they're going to give you the information, but you got to find out what to do with it. So it taught me how to use like, like MMAP and Wireshark and like all those things that you would hear about that I'm learning, you know, what is this for my security plus, but then here doing this project, I can actually see hands on how to use it. And again, I was partnered with somebody who had just finished like a SANS training and he's, he was um, actually an instructor for the company after for a while. But he knew what he was doing. So he was, like, showing us, okay, this is what you do with this. So it's a really good learning experience, again, for me to figure out how much I did not know. And, yeah, it worked out for me. So I did two of those sprints. And that, just being going through that program for free, I was able to I put all that on my LinkedIn as I went. That, that's a really big key for me. Like, everything that you do. Make sure you post and make sure you're talking about it. Like people be like, how you get all, how do you get all these opportunities? Because everything that I do, somebody knows about it. Mm -hmm. It's not just hiding on my resume, you know, for whatever random jobs that I apply to. Everybody is gonna know what I'm doing. So when I finished clicks, I posted the the certification that they gave me on LinkedIn, um, and that was all I had. But in my first initial interviews for my two roles that I've held in security so far, that was the only project. That was the only experience that I could talk about. But that still gave me a benefit over other candidates because I had practical experience. Just listening to your story, you were going to be successful no matter what path you went down because you are good at doing the big P and that's preparation. A lot of people, it's like, like you, it's not a Bible podcast, <laughs> seeking you shall find. That's what you did. Mm hmm a lot of people are waiting on a magical answer to tell them, oh, you should do this and this. But I'm pretty sure did that thing, when you found Clicks, did it just st start off by you just typing in cybersecurity projects or something? Um, I wasn't typing in cybersecurity projects, but I really was deep into the cybersecurity community on LinkedIn. So I had my, my timeline on LinkedIn was curated for mm -hmm. any opportunity that was coming up for anybody that wanted to get into cybersecurity. I was going to see it. Yeah. So... I'm, and I I was on LinkedIn like that was my job. Facebook, Instagram, that was gone. I was on LinkedIn all day yeah, long. So you was dedicated. Yeah. But you know what's funny? In the way that LinkedIn can work for you, Twitter can service that as well. Mm -hmm. I've known people who've gotten jobs off of Twitter based off like what they post about and mm -hmm. whatever. But no, when students, whenever y'all see this or clients, I'm sorry, y'all not students, y'all clients. Whenever you see this or future clients, when you go about showing and broadcasting what you're knowing, and I, I tell these people all the time about branding, and I say, hey, I'm not telling you to brand as an influencer. 
I'm telling you to simply brand yourself as a person that's pivoting into cybersecurity, what you're learning about, showing your personality and your passion behind it. Because sometimes when it comes to you, I've showed them this plenty of times. There have been times I applied to jobs. I'm like, you know what? I really like this company. Let me see if I follow anybody that works there or let me see if I can find who's on that team that works there, which I've done both. Mm -hmm. And based off of my content and based on what I post on LinkedIn, these people say, oh, you'll be a great addition to a team. Let me tell the hiring managers or whatever. So if you are doing all these things on your LinkedIn, just starting off and now somebody goes to check like your thing, if you sent them a message, they say, oh, this is, this person is, they serious. They trying to get to it. We need people like this here. And that's when people want to help you. But if you don't have anything on your LinkedIn, but you stay and you want to do something and it's already hard enough to prove what you know, it's going to be harder for you to get a referral or somebody to even want to help out. So all I'm trying to say is you don't have to mimic what she did, but you need to do some of it. That's actually like what you said is exactly how I got my job right now. Literally from me posting all the organizations that I'm a part of, all of the everything that I participate in, all the accomplishments, you know, just along my entire journey, everything is posted. So when somebody is looking for a certain skill set, if I match that skill set and I come up because it's posted on my profile, my current manager was looking for someone who was involved in organizations. Um, they had actually, um, he was in communication with another WESIS member who mm -hmm. was going to have my job. And she ended up, um, she got like her dream job. So she was no longer in the running for the role, but she was like, Hey, check out somebody who's a, a member of WESIS. I started a WESIS chapter at my campus. So when you type okay. in, let me see who, who in Weeses, I'm the one that come up. All I hear is Reese's right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's Weeses, Women in Cybersecurity, and it's pronounced Weeses, like we sisters. 